Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. All right, so we, we were told earlier, or at least I had a video out earlier letting you know that Tack McKinney, um, was in for a workout, and apparently Jerry Jones definitely likes him. They are taking him a tour of the practice facilities and stuff and um, dotting the T's and crossing I's, and it looks like the Cowboys will be signing him. Um, the This is not that much of a surprise because there's a relationship there because Dan Quinn and the Atlanta Falcons originally drafted Tack McKinney in the first round with the 26th pick um, in the 2017 draft. So there is familiarity in there. Unfortunately for Tack, injuries have been a problem. Um, last year playing for the Cleveland Browns after four years with uh, the Atlanta Falcons. But age-wise, he's only 26 years old. So he's still young, six foot two, defensive end, and um, let me go through the history of what we have with them. I, I, in the other video, I talked about um, the numbers and things, and we'll go back to his numbers here in a little bit. Um, but he ended up being released by Atlanta Falcons because of injuries, um, and it hasn't been an easy journey for him. So he was a uh, – let me slow down here. He was selected originally by the Atlanta Falcons in 2017 with the 26th pick overall. He struggled with injuries through the course of his career, um, and the last year he was with Atlanta, he only played for four games. So he was claimed then by the Bengals and then by the 49ers um, in 2020, but was unable to pass the physicals because of a lingering groin injury. He was later then claimed by the Raiders and put on injured reserve. Um, and he was unable to practice with the team until like that December and was not ever activated from IR. So they released him. Then the Cleveland Browns signed him last year to a four and a half million dollar contract um, with the Cleveland Browns. Um, let, let me actually go back to his statistics here. Um, his rookie year, um, he didn't start any games, but he played in 16, six sacks. His second year, seven sacks, showed a lot of promise and things. Uh, third year, three and a half sacks. And then again, the last year in Atlanta, he only played in four games, had one sack. And of course, was released and then picked up by other teams and so on and never uh, got back on the field. Cleveland picked him up last year. Uh, which case he was able to start two games, played in 11, and had two and a half sacks, 18 tackles, and then tore his Achilles tendon. The Achilles tendon is supposedly completely healed. The Cowboys, of course, you know, we, we know something about injuries and things and have kicked the tires on him to check him out and try and find out what's going on, you know, with as far as injury history and stuff. And this is a guy who was a first round draft pick, had great grades and stuff. And knowing that he got four and a half million dollars last year, it probably will be less because of the Achilles injury. This is a Stephen Jones type of a guy. The thing about attack is it's it's low risk and possibly high reward. This could be another guy who is on the rebound trying to get his career and stuff together. And um, because the incentive will be a one-year deal, it's a prove-it type of a deal, in which case sometimes you end up getting a lot of great things on there. The one thing that is kind of a question, and I have an interview from him from last year that I'm going to play uh, a little excerpt from. He, during the times when he had the injuries, um, he ended up basically kind of walking away for a bit for personal reasons. It's undisclosed. Nobody knows exactly what it is. The uh, press tried to press him on it, and he just basically said, I don't want to talk about that. But let's listen to Teak, to, um, Tack, Tack McKinney. Boy, I'm sorry. I'm screwing this thing all up. Let's listen to him in his own words. This was early last year with the Cleveland Browns. How do you think you've played? Um, I think there's room for improvement. Um, always. Uh, you know, whenever I get my opportunities to go out there, you know, I got to make them count. So uh, I think there's always room for improvement. Did you have a lot of rust to knock off when the regular season started? Um, I say yes. I mean, last year, I mean, I pretty much missed the whole season due to an injury um, and in training camp, you know, you know, but yeah, I adapt pretty fast. 
So uh, things has been well. I mean, I've been in communication with the coaches, with the playbooks and all that, so there's no issue there. How do you guys build on last week? I mean, it's pretty tough to top that, but how do you build on it? Um, you just go out. You know, that was last week, and uh, focus on this week. You know, we got a new opponent, and um, we got to put the work in. And last week we put the work in, so this week, you know, it started yesterday, and uh, just keep on building. You're around, I mean, you're around Miles every day. I mean, when you see a performance like that, what, just, what do you come away thinking? No, it's awesome. It's awesome because he put in that work. And um, as a D lineman, um, to see one of your fellow D linemen have one of them days, you know, you just root for him because, you know, once you're in that zone, you know, you can't be blocked. And um, every D lineman knows that feeling. When you're in that zone, it's, it's the greatest feeling ever. Mm -hmm. It was awesome to see him get them, uh, get all them sacks. When the aggression that you guys played with, do you think that's kind of a blueprint for what you can do all season? Yes, um, it just starts It starts with uh, out there on the field. Like, you know, we got a lot of new guys on this team, including me. And, um, you know, it's just going to take time for us to all gel together and get things going. So, um, you know, like I said, it starts at practice. You know, it starts in, you know, the meetings, um, wanting to put in the work, and um, wanting to have them type of games where we all can eat. When you were away, was that a personal thing or you? Um, I, I'd rather not talk about it if that's okay. Well, yeah. Was it, but was it difficult to come back, or is there? Anything? Um, no, nah, no, nah, I got a great. It's um, the Cleveland Browns got a great organization. Uh, I was in contact with Mr. Barry, Coach Ski, mm -hmm. uh, my teammates reaching out to me. So um, everything was good, but um, I'd just rather not get too deep into that personal matter. But like I said, a great organization. Uh, love Mr. Barry, love Coach Ski. Um, love the Cleveland Browns organization. What, what did it mean to you, though, that they gave you that time to, to deal with whatever it was and when you came back? Um, just the support. Just the support uh, means everything. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's a lot of, you know, NFL really is not like that. You know what I'm saying? So um, I had the support from, you know, the owner, um, the GM, the head coach, my teammates. Um, it was just it was just great. So I'm glad to uh, be at Brown and and then continue to focus and get ready for Minnesota. Okay, so, um, again, he doesn't want to elaborate on exactly what the personal reasons were where he stepped away for a while, and we can respect that. Um, but definitely sounded thankful for the Cleveland Browns and the support and the teammates and stuff, and that's something that he could definitely uh, get with the Dallas Cowboys because, you know, for the most part, you know, once they buy into you, you're part of the family. So he would definitely get that support system for whatever may have been there. Maybe whatever it was is done and over with. The bigger question is, is can he stay healthy? But, you know, one of the things that I always look at is you can never have enough guys that are good at pass rushing. And the Cowboys, you know, we can go back to Jimmy Johnson and Jerry Jones when they were back together. They brought in a lot of guys who people thought were done. You know, Nate Newton, for example, Washington said he was too fat and just, you know, couldn't do anything with them, and he becomes one of the best offensive linemen that the Cowboys ever had. There's no harm, especially in a contract that will be as little as this one, to kick the tires and see. I mean, if you end up getting, let's say, three or four sacks from, you know, uh, Tack, and let's say you get, you know, three or four or five sacks from Dante Fowler, well, you've already made up for what you got from Randy Gregory. So we'll see if they end up signing up. Stephen Jones basically is giddy about, about him, so it must be a team-friendly contract, and all goes well, he will become a Dallas Cowboy. So that's what we got here, guys. Tack McKinney may be becoming a Dallas Cowboys player tonight. See you later.